you know, of course, brand new content uh, that we've all, Quinn and I have just been fooling around with the game type uh, and looking at exactly how this can be tweaked. So the first one is you can actually have up to three balls in Ricochet. Yeah, so that, that'll be pretty crazy to see if people want to do not only just just one ball, like what we're seeing here tonight, but do they want to do two or three? It'll be crazy, uh, crazy ball town, that mode. I don't even know what you'd call it, but there'd be balls everywhere. Uh, <laughs> next thing as we look, we've got the ball spawn order. So tonight, what you're seeing is uh, the progressive order. So let's let's talk about a little bit of the ball spawn order, Bravo, and what what you uh, how do we explain that to the people at home? Sure. So uh, the ball spawn order right now, what you're seeing is progressive. So when that ball spawns in the beginning, it's always going to spawn in the middle. Then it's going to move to long haul. Then it's going to move to under bridge and so forth. Kind of cyclical. But you also have different options there, such as static, which I think uh, the hardcore competitive community will really like, as you can have that ball respawn in a set location, such as mid hall or green hall, every time. So players can then set up and kind of get established once again. You also have random. So if you want that ball to be popping up uh, across different locations across the map, you can also do that. Yeah. I mean, again, forgers, they can go in there. They could put a bunch of the different ball locations. They could do it random. They could do random with three balls. It'll be not only ball town, it'll be crazy ball town. It'll be really cool to, to, to see what the people do with this. Also, uh, we, we've got ball spawn delay that could be customized. And what the, uh, the delay there is, uh, that goes from zero to up to two minutes. And the ball spawn delay, for those of you who don't know what that is, is every time the ball is scored, or even at the beginning of the match, the ball will not spawn until that time. So right now, here, we're playing at 10 seconds, so every time the ball is scored, there's going to be 10 seconds that the ball will not be at play. And then you want to go to that location, try to fight over it, and secure it. So right now, at the ball spawn delay, we're playing on 10 seconds here. Uh, ball reset time. Yeah, ball reset time is something I was talking about earlier as well. Uh, if the ball is not touched for a certain amount of time, just like you have in something like Griff Ball, it's going to reset. So you can customize that once again also uh, from anywhere from uh, no time all the way up to two minutes as well. And the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, that automatic pickup. You can also turn that off, toggle it on and off, just like you can in Griff Ball and Oddball. Yeah, and then we also have the hot potato timer. Uh, hot potato is something in Oddball that you could actually have it selected so that the person that holds the ball, there's a time in which the ball could actually explode and kill the uh, the carrier. So that could be a, a crazy one that you throw in with uh, three balls, random spawns, and hot potato. It would be hot potato crazy ball town, the game. It would be sweet. <laughs> uh, also, uh, we also have uh, that, of course, is disabled for this mode, but we also have the carrier marker can be turned a ton of different settings actually. We have locked on, which is what you're seeing here. So the ball can be uh, locked on. So anytime a player on either team uh, has the ball, you're gonna see that indicator on your screen. Uh, there's also blip, which will kind of flash, similar to the flag in Halo 4, that'll solely flash as a player moves the ball around the map. We also have uh, friendly only, so you'll only know what, when your teammates have the ball. And the lastly, there's also disabled, which provides for some pretty sneaky gameplay. Yeah, that'll be interesting to one. Like I said, I love that we have a lot of options here for this game mode. People are going to love that. Also, what we've got is friendly goal, which we're playing with disabled here. Friendly goal, all that means is that if you have the ball and you run into your own goal or you, or you try to throw it in, it could actually score against you. So we have that disabled, but if you want to mess around with that or let someone on your team do what sometimes uh, other people do in basketball and accidentally shoot the ball into their own hoop, that could be fun too. That's right. All right, I think we're going to actually jump back into the gameplay right now as we switch back over. Uh, we'll see what's going on over there. Now we're still on board with Blue Team here. LMAO trying to extend their five-game winning streak up to six. Batman 93 leading his team here so far. And once again, no surprise, they're up to a 50-0 to zero lead getting that first run. And they're also getting this first ball respawn here as they're going to try to run this across. Now they pull back. Look how, I mean, still playing so cautiously. They go for that long throw wow. all the way to the first BR. They're going to try to run that bomb around ball Excuse me, around the corner. They get that 50-point run once again. And as I said, that ball is now going to go all the way down to tunnel and under bridge area. We're going to try to get three quick runs right here. Still rocking that trauma AR and the Promethean Vision paying off for him right here. Doing well. Going to try to run this ball up, but he does have several players on his radar. He needs to play cautiously here. Yeah, Batman 93, he loves that AR, man. I'm telling you. It's uh, crazy to, to, to not only see him use that so much as he is, and he even has BR as a secondary, and he's using AR as much as he is. Cheating, man. They've got the, they're passing already. They're setting up locations, and that's the other thing I've been so excited about this Bravo, is that with the ball, uh, I think we can actually see people form positions. You know, when you look at this, is like someone that is always waiting and getting the ball and then dishing it out to his team. You know, almost like a point guard or something. And I could even see someone that, like, hey, you know what? 
you aren't exactly the best slayer on a team, but you could play goaltender. And that would be so infuriating in this mode to have someone on the other team that just sits in front of the goal and jumps and intercepts it. I mean, that would just, I don't know, that would really irk me. All right, and especially as you said, Quinn, if you can expect top-level teams to only be throwing, it might actually be beneficial for players. Uh, right there, they get another 50-point run. They go up 200-0. to They're only one score away there from taking this game. Uh, really, and it, we're not even three minutes into this match. Yeah, I mean, turn out the lights, the party's over. Because this game... Game is 200 to zero. That's exactly what I was thinking um, with these two teams. Uh, now 200 to zero, 530 left in the match. But like you were saying, if two teams are playing and it's all about throwing with these two tightly matched teams, I can definitely see a player kind of sitting back and playing goaltender, you know, kind of sitting back, making sure no one hits those long throws. And of course, the best way to do that is really to be at the right place at the right time. Yeah, I mean, this... Batman 93, he's like a free agent. He's just roaming around, doing whatever he wants. He's just running and gunning, you know? Yeah, right there, missing the few jumps there on the pit box. But they do get that 50-point run. That's going to be it. Uh, five runs in a row. That extends their streak to six. The fastest game we've actually seen here of Pitfall, Ricochet. A really nice job. Blue team and Batman 93, they just can't be stopped so far. Yeah, I mean, we might as well go back to the custom game options <laughs> because uh, these matches are going pretty fast, you know? It's a... Uh, it's pretty crazy when you really think about it, you know. I mean, the, the Batman 93, they've, he's uh, running around. I, I really love seeing the, the passes that they're executing there. I mean, that's why they're doing so well. That's why they're staying there. I mean, someone got to get them some water, keep them hydrated, get them going. I mean, they're over there just doing their thing, you know. It's like they just showed up. Oh, yeah, it's like, it's like they made the game or something. I don't even know. It's like they're cheating or something. They're just showing up here and wrecking, wrecking shop, you know. Yeah, a really nice shot from them. Like we said, Batman 93 had that throw lined up from long haul. Instead, he tosses the ball uh, all the way back to the guy in the first PR who then goes in for the run. Uh, if you guys are just joining us, welcome. If you're watching on Twitch, uh, on our Twitch channel, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Bravo, joined by Quinn, uh, also known as Queen de Pooh, Del Hoyo, <laughs> this weekend. Uh, so we're showing off the Champions Bundle, a brand new DLC pack coming to Halo 4, uh, showing it off in back-to-back -back tournaments. Tonight we're doing Ricochet on Pitfall. We've just got a huge line of players actually sitting down and waiting to play uh, and challenge these station winners. And tomorrow night we're also going to be showing off uh, game types like Team Slayer on Vertigo, Capture the Flag on Pit Pitfall, which of course is such a classic. Uh, so really great to see those as well. Uh, so this tournament right here, though, all about Ricochet. If we want to jump back into the Ricochet card about that information about just how you score uh, on this game type and really how that all works. Uh, of course, when you throw the ball in, that's 20 points. Uh, when you run it in, that's 50 points. And today, we're playing the first to 250 points. And when this does come to Halo 4 matchmaking, we'll also be playing on these exact settings. So for those of you joining us at home, you're getting a first look and a little bit of a strategical advantage over everyone else who's going to be playing this game type when it comes to Halo 4 matchmaking. Unless, of course, you're going up against LMAO and Batman 93 and his trauma AR, because clearly... He's bringing that. But what I will say is that we're going to actually have a playlist with uh, Ricochet right here on August 20th. So what you're seeing here, you can actually go and do that playlist, and you, could, and you could play Ricochet as much as you want. Right, and that's actually going to be uh, you know, exclusive to players who do get that Champions Bundle for a while, the Ricochet mode. Uh, you, for about, I believe, a two-week period, you're only going to be able to play Ricochet if you do grab the Champions Bundle. So that'll also be another time when you can get a little bit of an advantage over the competition. And, Quinn, also this weekend we've got AGL 8 going on in Knoxville. I'm really excited to see how this game type is going to be worked into tournament game types. You know, we've got a lot of tournaments, UMG, going on this summer as well. It's going to be cool to see how competitive and professional players who play so much of this game approach it, like you said, so many different custom game options, so many uh, opportunities for different strategies. Really looking forward to seeing how that